get, 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 get. Go and get. I was just talking about how he's super nice and doesn't really mess with anybody, and then he's in here causing all sorts of trouble. This is what we use for the quail. It's called game bird chow. It's got a higher protein than the other. Although, has not generated not nary an egg. So, out to the pen we go. Got my helper with me. She's bringing the chick food for the juveniles. No, that's not the quail food. That's the chicken food. But yes, you can go in the chicken pen and pour it in there. So, we're going to walk out here to the chicken pen that's got the juveniles in it. Don't drop it. We're going to feed these guys. You are a big helper. I appreciate it. We're going to go in the chicken pen. Me and my little helper, Annie. The leghorn's over there trying to eat the quail food. All right. You know where to pour it? All right, hold on. Oh, goodness. Knock my hat off. All right. Here. Big helper. There you go. Good job. All right, so I said in the other videos that we don't really fool around with feeders, that they end up wasting it anyway. Dad. Well, we kind of started this. Dad, the food box is empty. Is empty? You want to do the quail now? No. All right. So I said in one of the other videos that we don't really fool around with the feeders, that we just kind of pour it out for them because uh, they end up wasting so much of it. And... Uh, well, Tathis made me out to be a liar on that. So we put some feeder in the pens to see if my assumption was correct. If my assumption was not correct. We're doing a lot better on not wasting feed or anything like that. All right, going in there. So now we're going in the crazy quail pen. Whoa, they fly so fast. They're flying everywhere. All right, go forward in the holes. Look at them. It's going crazy. Good job. Done. I told you on the last video, I'm like, oh, not tired of these quail. Done. And I am. All right, how are we doing on food over here with little Jake and his ladies? Y'all doing all right? Jake, you want to do some more showing off? Hmm? Get it. You going to get it? So we've got, we've got a, uh, that little Tupperware tote right there. Uh, we put some hay in that for the ceramics to go in at night. Um, Cause they're not, they, they hadn't really, we had a roost bar in there and they weren't real big on roosting. So I've got my little frizzle silky in here with them. Um, she was kind of getting beat up on with the juvenile. So I put her in here and she's doing pretty good. So she goes in that little house um, and sleeps at night. The ceramics, they're, they're just not a fan of it for whatever reason. So they weren't big on, on a roosting bar. Um, and they don't like going in that house at night. So I got that old, we got another egg. Oh my goodness. Here, show the cam. Oh my goodness. What color is that egg? Yellow. It's a yellowish brown. Yeah. All right, go take it back to mama. Don't bust it. We got so many eggs today. Go take it to mama. I want to see. If they laid any eggs. You want to see if they laid any eggs? Okay. Well, be careful. Don't let them out. So anyway, they want the ceramic. You want me to let you in? Yeah. Go on in there. She's checking for ceramic eggs. Oh, there's one. Here, come show the camera. Show them how little that egg is. Oh my goodness. That's a cool egg. Let's oh, <coughs> see if there's any more in there. Here, give me that one. Thank you. 
All right, so roosting bar, they don't like it. A little house, they don't like it. So, got this little, that used to be a water bucket for the, um, oh. He's trying to get out. No, he's fine. He just was worried about what you were doing. Just go in there. So we got, that used to be the water bucket for the, we had two Nigerian uh, dwarf goats um, that we sold. Anyway, so I got that. We put some hay in it and uh, they like it. They go in at night or they hop up in there at night. Do you see any more eggs? No. They hop in it up at night and uh, they all cuddle up. The little Jake, uh, Cinderella, uh, Snow White and whatever. I don't know what their names are. There's no anymore. Okay, there's no more. So anyway, they get in at night and they cuddle up and uh, it's kind of cute. So they're good on food. They're good on water. Their bedding's good. It's not dirty. The bedding inside the little house is good. And we got another shrimp egg today. So how about that? We've gotten like, I don't know, seven or eight eggs today, I think. Still no quail eggs. It's making me mad. I'm about to get rid of them. What you doing there, Rusty? You hungry? Mm. Mama, it's getting close to dinner time. That's what it is. What are you doing, Rusty? He's trying to sneak out. Come here. Hey, come here. Yeah. Let's see if we can find this fly spray. It don't really work that good, though. It works for a little bit. Not very long at all. So, remember, Rusty's an old man. He's 20, how old is he? 22, 24. 22, 24 years old, somewhere around in there. So he's an old man. So he gets a little bit different diet than what a young horse would get. So he gets one of these, that's a three quart scoop. He gets one of these filled with that. That's an alfalfa cube. We soak it in warm water, let it get real soft because he doesn't have a whole lot of teeth. So he can chew it down. So that soaks in water and it loosens up and it looks just like regular alfalfa grass. So he gets one of those in the morning. He gets another scoop of grain. It's a, that's a, probably a terrible thing. Anyway, it's a senior feed. It's got beet pulp and it's got all sorts of stuff in it. And that helps him uh, with his coat. It helps have, make sure that he has enough energy. It's got plenty of protein. I mean, it's got everything that he needs to be happy. So he gets a scoop of the alfalfa in the morning that's soaked and he gets a scoop of the senior feed in the morning. It's soaked as well. It's already moist, but we just go ahead and soak it with the alfalfa just to be safe. Um, Cause I'm not trying to deal with a choking horse. So, all right, so he gets uh, alfalfa scoop in the morning, scoop of the senior feed in the morning and then in the evening, and then he's on pasture all day. Uh, he's got, a little over two acres that he's on out there. Um, so and then he's on pasture all day, he's eat, eating grass and all that. And then in the evening time, he gets another scoop of alfalfa that we soak and another scoop of the senior feed that we scoop that we soak. When it's cold, we bring him into the barn. He goes in his stall. He's got a little uh, rack for the hay. We put hay in there for him and he did it through the night. Now that it's been warm, he just stays out in the pasture all night. Um, he doesn't really doesn't really want to come to the barn um, at night that much anymore. So even with the fans in here, um, which ain't on right now, but even with the fans in here, it's still a little warm in, at night. So uh, he just prefers it out there. So uh, we'll kind of just let him do what he wants to do. He's lived this long and had, had a hard life. For those that didn't see my first video, he came from a neglect situation. A fella rescued him from that. And then we got him from that fella. Um, I wish I had some video of him when we first got him but he was skin and bones i mean you could see every rib in his body you could see his whole backbone you could see his hip bones i mean it was bad um if you look if you ever watch like neglected horse tv shows and animal rescue shows and all that and as bad as some of those horses look that, that's how bad rusty was so he was always super sweet when when we first got him and he's still really sweet he doesn't he doesn't get riled up about anything so uh, now he looks like a regular horse and you'd never know it, but it was a slow process building his weight back up and uh, he's got his weight back up. So for those of you that do have a horse or are thinking about getting a horse, let me tell you something to steer clear of. These 
or alfalfa pellets. Somebody who shall rename, rena, remain nameless, Tabitha, uh, grabbed the wrong bag when she went to the store and got pellets instead of cubes. Those take forever to break down. And then when they break down, it's really not much alfalfa in there. It's just kind of soupy grass water. So he only ate that for one meal. And I went and got the right stuff. So we do a couple of different types of chicken feed. We do a layer feed. Um, which there's a couple of different brands. We use whatever's available at our local tractor supply. This is what was available when we went. Just helps them produce the eggs. It helps make sure that the egg shells are hard. Uh, if you follow our farm page, you'll see where we had a, uh, I don't know what the actual term's called. I call it a ghost egg. Had a ghost egg laid. It didn't have the hard shell on it. It was just the rubbery membrane on the inside. Um, it's kind of weird looking, but it's kind of cool. So we feed the layer feed and then we feed scratch grains, which is cracked corn, oats, barley. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. And you can feed that to everybody. So we started getting that when we got the guineas um because it's good for any kind of fowl game or not game fowl but any kind of birds fowl so we got that the chickens absolutely love it we also feed them just regular cracked corn as well so um nobody can say our chickens don't eat because they definitely eat they free range all day um, they go up at night um but on top of their free range they'll get we generally do Half a scoop to a scoop of the scratch grains and then a scoop of the layer feed. And then every so often as a, a special treat, we'll do um, just some cracked corn for them, just as like a little treat. So from time to time, we'll buy them some dried mealworms and give those to them. And then we feed them table scraps. Their favorite, spaghetti. Go figure. So a lot of people think that chickens are vegetarians. They're not. They're dinosaurs is what they are. They will eat anything and everything. I did throw out a piece of a poblano pepper that I was cooking with the other night. And I guess maybe it was a little spicy for them because they didn't eat it. But they ate the bell pepper, pieces of bell pepper I threw out. But they love spaghetti. They love um, bread, old bread, dried bread, just any kind of leftovers. Cornbread, they really love cornbread, but spaghetti is their absolute favorite. Um, ben is coming around with Yoda. His new favorite thing is to walk Yoda around because I don't know why. He just does. So anyway, chickens are not vegetarian. So for those of you out there, city folk, that are buying, quote, vegetarian eggs, stop it. That's not their normal diet. Just stop it. Come here, Missy. Missy, our little chihuahua. It's okay. What are you sorry about? It's okay. I to get It's okay. She can come out. So, back to that. Vegetarian chicken eggs? No. It's bad. It's not their normal diet. They need protein. They need regular stuff. Oh, if I could set up a video or a camera to just watch them all through the day. When a bug comes through, anything comes through, they're on it. They love it. They chase snakes, they eat snakes, they do all sorts of crazy stuff, which we hadn't had any snakes. We've had one snake out here, it was a rat snake, it was in the garage. He got relocated, we didn't kill him because not all snakes are bad snakes. So, we didn't kill him, just relocated him out to the big pasture, way over there, so that he doesn't mess around and bother anything. Now, if it's a venomous snake, probably wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have been messing with him anyway. But vegetarian eggs are a no-no. That's just, it's just, it's stupid. And another thing, if you've got somebody that you know that sells eggs, buy the eggs from them. Those eggs are way better than the eggs that you buy in the grocery store. They're way healthier. The chickens have a better life, nine times out of 10. Because for somebody to say that they're free range, okay, for somebody or a company to be able to market them as free range, they literally, only have to have access to the outside it doesn't even have to be that they can get outside they just have to have access to it which means if there's a hole big enough for their head to poke out that's not 
and it's not a cage on the outside, that can be considered free range. It's ridiculous. So our chickens are legit free range. Y'all see them running around on the videos, all that. When we build the big pen, not the chain link pen that you saw, but when I build the big pen, which is gonna go right here, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna start right there and it's gonna go to down there. It's gonna be huge. That's where our egg layers are gonna be. So to be considered free range, they just have to be able to at least stick their head outside of a cage. Production egg chickens, most of the time, never touch the ground. They live in a small cage that has a perch. And there's a little food trough that they can stick their head out and eat. And then they lay the egg. And that's about it. And the egg drops down and either somebody comes and picks it up or it drops onto a little conveyor belt and it gets to a little sorting area and all that. So, most of your production egg layers are in a cage that has a perch and a little feed trough and a little water thing. That's it. So then be able to be called free range. They have a little window that they can stick their head out to the outside. Must be, I see it. They must be girls. How about that? The Dominic rooster just mounted one of the guineas. I was thinking the guineas were boys this whole time. But apparently, they're girls. And yes, a chicken can mate with a guinea. And it makes a very ugly creature. Or we have a Tiger King situation. I think they're girls. I hope they're girls. Anyway, so as long as the chicken, production chicken, can stick his head outside from his cage, he doesn't have to actually leave his cage. He can just put his head outside the cage. You can call him free range, according to the USDA. Uh, we don't play that here. Ours are free range. Yes, they'll be in a big pen, but it's a huge pen. I don't know how big that is, but it's huge. Um, and they'll probably still be let out of that pen free range over the property during the middle of the day and then they'll go back up at night and then they'll stay in there in the morning until they lay their eggs and then they'll go back out but um i see a lot of gimmicks with eggs and uh it's just sad so i've got a friend that is paying i think he said seven dollars a dozen for pasture raised vegetarian vegetarian diet eggs and uh, I hadn't really talked to him about it, but it's a waste of money. Um, now, I don't know what they classify pasture raise at. I don't know what that that is, but I looked into what it is to be considered free range since I was going to have mine in a pen or am going to have mine in a pen. I didn't want to say that we we're free range if we weren't actually free range. And then when I found out that they just have to be able to stick their head outside, to be classified as free range. So we're definitely free range. They got six acres that they can run all over. So they do. So I appreciate you guys coming along, checking out our new baby chicks, checking out some of the feed that we do. And uh, we really do appreciate it. So give us a like if you like the video. Leave us some comments on questions you might have, things you might want to see, and please, subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on more videos like this. We sure appreciate you. Thanks.